Conrad Pilditch is from Waikato University. He's a theme leader for degradation and recovery. Conrad read, sorry, Conrad, is a professor of marine science at the University of Waikato. His research interests focus on the dynamics of marine soft sediment ecosystems, which is amongst the most affected by human activities. He has worked extensively in both coastal and deep sea environments. Recently, he has focused on determining biodiversity and ecosystem function responses to globally important stresses in our harbours and estuaries. Conrad's biophysical research interests provide critical links between field-based science and, and models of ecosystem processes that underpin marine management. Let's welcome Conrad to the stage. I must admit to be suffering a little bit of imposter syndrome both with the introduction and also um, as a non-fishery scientist speaking in an economics um, session, but I'll do my best. Um, so as PR kind of introduced, I, I spend my time, my passion and my research is understanding what the shellfish, worms and crabs and the biodiversity in marine soft sediments do and the linkage is through to functions and then also the work that, that nature does for us as, as people. And over the years, I've been um, monitoring the decline, as, as many people have, the reductions in biodiversity that have been occurring both in our oceans but also globally as well. And so these, these declines have been um, documented, well documented in recent reports in terms of the state of marine environment reporting, uh, managing our estuaries and also in the state of the, the Hauraki Gulf. And much of these decline is attributed to the activities that we carry out in the marine environment. And particularly in the coastal marine environment, a lot of those activities are economic activities that we currently do. So in the coastal marine environment, they're activities that are occurring on, in the ocean, but also because of the tight land sea connectivity, economic activities that are occurring um, on, the, um, on the land. So in this kind of context, um, I'm going to try and answer the question, uh, what does a long-term um, healthy blue economy look like to me? Well, I guess for me, when I was thinking about this question, is we really have to evolve our relationship with the moana. And we need to evolve it from one that is dominated by a negative reciprocity, I've worked hard to say that word, and shift it from what Salins define in Stone Age economics as one where one party attempts to act entirely on their own self-interest in pursuit of material advantages or profit. Okay, and so to me, a lot of our activities are kind of in that, in that lens. The ocean's too big to fail and infant capacity to di disperse what we put into it. So a blue economy for me is one where we enhance marine health through our economic activities, and in return, that marine health enhances the economy. We're living with nature and not against it. So in a very uh, simple uh, st series of statements, um, what a long-term healthy blue economy looks like to me is summarised in these five things that I'd like you to take away from my short presentation today. I guess one of the first things for me is recognising the work nature does for people. Okay, and it seems like a fairly simple concept, but 40 to 6, 40 to 80 percent of the oxygen we breathe is generated by the oceans. Okay, very simple statement. With healthy, productive ocean ecosystems, that service is being put in threat, under threat. The ocean also sequesters vast amounts of carbon. Okay, it stores it in the sediments, removes it from the atmosphere, and moderates climate change. So many of this, much of this work that nature does for people is underpinned by healthy ecosystems, by biodiversity. So a healthy blue economy takes into account those goods and services and the work that nature does for people that's often discounted or unrecognised in current models. A blue economy, to me, is also regenerative and restorative activities are part of the doing. We've documented the decline. The oceans can recover, but it needs help. So if we're taking from the environment, we also should be giving back to the environment as well. So that regenerative, restorative activities are not special, it becomes the norm and it's the way of doing. In a healthy blue economy, I'd like to see marine protected areas used as Tonga, as valuable assets that improve environmental and economic well-being. 
We know from some of the research that's been done out of Lee Marine Laboratory that that small, tiny reserve disproportionately contributes to snapper recruitment in the wider Hauraki Gulf. Why don't we have a network of these reserves? Everyone will benefit from those areas that are producing more for the benefit of larger areas. At the moment, these reserves are, are often received, or these protected areas, as a removal of rights, as opposed to a valuable asset that needs protecting and has value. This is my social science statement. People in place accrue the benefits. So in a healthy blue economy, it's community-based. The people that are doing the activities are reaping the rewards. Activities that are occurring elsewhere are helping people in place. There's synergistically activities working together so others are not excluded. And finally, before my 43 seconds runs out, the intergenerational and resilient uh, economies and environment. We're seeing constantly in our coastal environment boom, bust cycles and resources. We just need to think about the scallop fishery um, and the closures that have occurred um, in Hauraki and down the Coromandel just recently. In a healthy blue economy, those boom and bust cycles are a thing of the past and we have intergenerational resilience to what climate um, may throw at us. And that's me done. Thank you.